Let's go ahead and start a game. So the easiest way to do that is after you've loaded up a player file, you can go down the list here and see some of the games that have yet to be played. They have a checkbox by them and they have no score. So let's choose uh, this one. So the New York Knicks versus Kansas City Kings. After you select that, that matchup will appear inside the game box. Go ahead and click the ready button and you'll be brought to the game options screen. So on the game options screen you can see the visiting player lineup or visiting team lineup, the home team lineup, coaches information which at this point is not really used in the game, time settings for the game, overtime settings, various other rules, save and transfer which is how you can transfer over settings and rules from one team to either several more or one more or all of the other teams, miscellaneous, and then the house rules. I'm going to set the fast breaks rule to normal. Go back here for a second. Let's say the, the lineup that is already on the uh, court here was one that was actually used in 1980-81. If we want to make a change to that, though, it's quite easy to do so. So let's say we want to have Dwayne Scales start for Sly Williams. Simply click on Scales name and then click on the number, the arrow next to uh, Sly Williams name. All right. We're going to put him back in now. You can do the same on this team. So if we want Lloyd Walton in for Phil Ford, we can do that quite easily. Down below are another set of options here. We can either have a team coached by a human, or we can have the AI coach it. In this game, we're going to have the human do both of them. There are several different game types, including normal, which is what we'll use today, helper mode, autoplay, run schedule, and board game. The board game mode isn't actually the game itself. It simply is a stats keeper for when you want to play a board game. So it'll keep stats for you, time for you, etc. So let's go with the settings we have and will be brought to the game screen. On the game screen we have several pieces of information. Here's the court. The default court for the game is being used at the moment because a special court was not set up previously for Kansas City. These are all the players from the visiting team, so in this case New York. And here we have the players for Kansas City on the other side. Underneath each of the players' names are their defensive ratings. These little circles represent the players' positions on the court. When they're in man-to-man -man defense, they simply will remain in this location or thereabouts. When they're in the zone, they literally move around the court a little bit. Over on the left, we have the bench area for the visitor. Let's go ahead and hit get click the begin button so we can kind of see what's going on a little bit better. Up top there are a series of preferences that can be changed so the on-court font size can be changed to something higher or lower. That's as high as this one will go but we'll leave it at 8. We can also change the bench font size, the player size itself, the ball size, and the ball picture itself. Right now it's an orange ball, but we can change it to red, white, and blue if we were playing an ABA game. Scoreboard font can be increased or decreased. And the play-by-play -play preferences include changing the font size, highlighting or not highlighting the player, and a delay. The default is 4. There are a series of tabs on each bench as well. Besides the bench tab, we have the game stats tab, which shows you all the stats the players, players are accruing during the game. 
The on-court players have an Astaire asterisk next to their name. This is a timekeeper, so it keeps track of player time, player usage. So we have the current time, the total time during the game, and the amount that he needs to rest to get back to a fresh slate. These are play, player ratings, as given in the 4th Street basketball system. These are the real-life stats for each player. They're color-coded by position to make it a little bit easier to pick out of a crowd. Medical tab will list any injuries that uh, players may or may not have. All right, let's go ahead and play. So let's do a jump ball here. New York controls the tip. So now we have a setup play. And setup play, since New York has the ball, they're throwing it down into this end of the court. Russell has the ball in zone 1B, so he's right underneath the basket, so he's near the hoop. The defender, by the way, is Wedman. So if you look at this, Russell is outlined in gold. So he's the offensive player. Wedman is outlined in black. He's the defensive player. We can see his card if we'd like, simply by double-clicking on his name. In fact, you can do that for any of the players. So, if we go down into the substitutes, I can take a look at Jojo White. By the way, his stats are listed there, simply by uh, tooltip text. Or we can double-click him, and then we can see a snapshot of his card. Same thing works on the visitor end of the court. Let's go ahead and run the play and see what Russell does. Oh, he's called for charging. So, over on the side here, there's a list of little numbers that uh, reflect some of the things going on in the game. First one that presently is in green is the fatigue level of the player. So, once he accrues fatigue, his value here will increase and he will label turn to red, indicating that he is hurting his team by being fatigued. Right next door are the personal fouls. So right now Russell has one foul on him. If we'd like to switch him into safe mode, we can simply click on that. It'll turn into an orange-red color, and that will make it less likely that he will pick up another foul, but It'll also make him a less useful defender. We can turn it off the same way. These are recipient values in brown, and they represent the likelihood that the player will be receiving the ball. So on the court right now, Ray Williams has the highest recipient value for New York. He will be the most likely player to end up with the ball in his hands. Second place player is Bill Cartwright. He'll be the next most likely, etc. Down below we have just a bunch of statistics numbers. So the first one, which is in red, are the number of points scored during this game by that player. The second is the number of rebounds. And the third are the assists. So basically the double-double statistics that you most commonly see. Further to the right we have two time readings. The top one is the current time the player has been on the court for. The second one is the total amount of time the player has spent on the court. Occasionally you will see these differ a little bit from what's actually going on, and that is because of rest. Okay, let's run a setup play. Otis Birdsong ends up with the ball just to the right of the basket. We'll run the play by Otis. Oh, the ball is stolen by Richardson. So he sets it up. Cartwright has the ball near the goal. He scores. And picks up a foul. So Lacey was charged with a foul here. And now Cartwright will go to the line for two. Over across from his name, you'll see he's now got two points during the game. Shoot the free throw. It's good. Now he's up to three points.
Wedman from mid-range. So he's in zone 2D. Run the play. Nothing but net. By the way, that is uh, shown up here, up at the top. So the result code is given up at the top. And that one shows you how Wedman scored. Furthermore, we can turn on the player view here. So Wedman was the person scoring. He's the offensive player. And if you look at the dice roll that he came up with, he won the matchup, which is given up here, presented up here. So Russell with his dice roll, which is a 4, and his defensive rating, which is 1, had a total of 5. Wedman had a dice roll of 3. His offensive rating is a, three, is a 2 in level 2. So he had a total of 5 as well. Ties always go to the offensive player. Further on, we have a 21. Combo orange, black. So 21 is red in level 2. Here's the orange number, 2. Here's the black number, 1. And we can see it's shaded green because he was successful. So that's the same symbol that appears up here in the top right corner. See the rest of Wedman's card here too, if you'd like. If we want to view the, the defensive player, here's Campy Russell, who was matched up against Wedman. If we go down into his defensive readings, had he won the matchup, a 21 on his card would have been a miss by Matt Wedman. So, for Wedman's sake, it was a good thing that he won. We can turn off the player view, or we can just hide it. Now it's hidden. Once you can move this around simply by clicking and dragging it. Or you can close it all together. As it says, you can turn it back on simply by clicking this button again. Alright, so Wedman scored. The score is now 3-2. to two. In favor of New York. We'll set up the ball here with Ray Richardson. So Michael Ray Richardson has the ball in 2C inside the three point line. Run the play. His shot is off the rim. There's nothing showing up here. That means it's a miss. Rebounded by King. King now ends up with the ball in 2D. Banks in his shot. KCK takes the lead. So King now has two points, as does Wedman. And this is how it continues on. Since New York now has the ball, they have an opportunity to take a timeout. Let's go ahead and take a timeout. By the way, the timeouts are posted on the scoreboard. We'll take a timeout simply to run a substitution, so you can see how that's done. Here's Dwayne Scales again. Let's plug him in for Sly Williams. And just as was the case on the game option screen, we can simply click on this button and Scales will enter the game in that slot. If at any time we'd like to see what the location grid is, we can simply click on this View Location Grid button and it'll show us what it is for each of the five positions. There's also another info box down in the lower right here corner that tells you a little bit more about what's going on on the court. So King has two points. He's one for one on field goals. Toggles it on and off. At any given time, if we would like to check out what the stats are, we can go ahead and click on the Display Stats button. And this will drum up the uh, early box score for the game. Once you close it, it'll simply go back to the game itself. Now, let's say I get interrupted and I don't have time to finish this game at this point in time. I can simply leave it. And then later on in the day or a week from now or whatever, if I hit the resume button, I can find that same game. Here it is, New York Knicks versus Kansas City Kings which was started on March 10th, 2022. 
and it'll pick it up right where it left off. 